that's that's cheap that's expensive trainers so one of the biggest differences you'll note straight off the bat is the price. You're looking more than three times the price for the expensive one here. Today we're going to be figuring out is that really worth it? So if you didn't know the brands, this is Slazinger. It's quite a popular brand in the UK. Uh, and this one over here is Asics. So with all that being said, let's get started having a look at the tread pattern. Okay, so quite simply what we're going to do is we'll load the bottom of the soles up with some paint and then we'll walk it onto the surface here and that will give us a really good indication as to what the tread pattern looks like. Now let's load up the expensive. So interestingly, what it looks like is a much fuller tread pattern on the cheap. You can see up there by the heel, we covered a lot better area. It's very light on the expensive, interestingly. Total footprint surface area, I would say expensive has cheap beat. You can see it's much closer together here. You're going to get better traction there than you will here. One thing I have to say is I don't like this massive empty space on the cheap. So now getting a closer look, I feel like this was a relatively equal outcome. The surface area is slightly better on the expensive, but overall, I think it's pretty close. So our next task is breathability. Now that's going to be the amount of air that the shoe allows in and out through these holes. Now on the surface of it, you can see expensive looks like it has a tighter knit and it will allow less air to run through. Now that can both be a good and a bad thing, but we're going to confirm that with our experiment any minute now. The simplest way to test this consistently, we'll use a tube and a vape. Closing off the top of the shoe so no air can escape, we'll fill the rest up with smoke and we'll see where it comes out. Now we'll move on to the expensive. So who won on breathability? Well, you've got to remember that this is a wider netting hole. Now it's going to save money on material that they would have made a slightly tighter knit here. It will just give you a slight more protection from the elements on the, on the expensive one, and you'll get slightly less protection on the cheap. Now that being said, you're kind of swapping that out with the fact that you're going to have more air coming through your shoe. It's going to be much more breathable. So next, what we're going to do is take a core sample from the heel of the shoe. This will give us a really good idea of what's inside in the different layers. And we can see if there's anything there that shouldn't be. And what this basically will do is cut a hole. And as it's cutting a hole, it will it will fill, fill up the round here. Um, typically use this is to make tiny little dowel pieces to fit back into wood to hide screw holes. But this will be perfect for what we're doing here. So all that being said, let's throw it in the drill and give it a go on the heel. So let's have a look at our first core sample. Now remember this is the cheap one. And so you can see it's very uniform all the way through. Let's have a closer look. What's interesting to me is there's some sort of glue in there. Now I'm not sure if that's because they've glued two bits of sole together or whether that's some glue in the top of the shoe. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit more investigating, but super interesting stuff. Let's have a look at the expensive one now. So what you'll see is there's no sort of strange glue or anything like that. It's a much, much more uniform finish on everything. And in fact, you can see now what you're paying for with the shoe on this. You can see there's a different, almost three, I think there's three or four different pieces of material used to create the sole. And now that's going to help with lots of different things, including cushioning, bounciness. I'm not sure what exactly the different materials are, but all I can say is the foam here compared to the foam on the cheap one, which is here, is much, much, much softer, way softer. So it's, it's, it's presses, compresses very easily. And this is very, very hard. So I wonder what effect that's going to have when you're actually using them to run. My worry with cheap is that the foam is not flexible enough and it's going to give you potentially some knee problems or back problems. We'll do a test run in a bit and we'll check to confirm those things or not. So to conclude, I think Expensive has done a better job on this test, not only in the quality of the material, but also in the different variation of material that there is. So what we'll do now is we'll take a small snippet of fabric from the heel here and we'll check that against the thread count on the cheap one. This is the expensive one. This will give us a really good indication as to how long it will last. The higher the thread count, typically the better it will last. And also in terms of comfortability over very long distances. Again, these are both long distance running shoes. So we'll check that out now. So you can see on the cheap, this is the cheap one. It's quite high, but I feel like this is not the highest possible thread count you can get. You can see when I take it away. 
So let's have a look at the thread count on the expensive now. So this is the expensive one. You can see the thread count is very, very high on the expensive. So this is again, this is just going to make it a much more comfortable shoe, especially uh, friction from long distance running. This is going to help massively with that. So I think expensive definitely wins on thread count. This is the inside lining of the shoe. So what we'll do now is we'll just do a quick run test. I've got one on each foot. So you can see I've got one on each foot and we'll see what the responsiveness from the road is like and how well, how comfortable they are to use. What I'll do is a little test on the road. I'll run on the pavement on concrete and then I'll do a little test on grass just to see if there is any difference. So you can really feel the lack of support on the cheap one. It, again, it just feels like I'm walking straight on the road, but I can very much feel the arch helping on the expensive. And as I walk, I've got much more spring in my step from the expensive one. I notice particularly when I'm running, I feel like there's much better response from the road on the expensive. So what we've done here is we'll cut the shoe in half to give like an x-ray vision of the inside of the shoe. You can see on the cheap, it makes much more sense what we were experiencing with the road. You've only really got two layers. You've got the memory foam inner sole here, and then you've got the actual foam layer of sole. On the expensive, you've got so many more layers. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers from expensive. It's much, much better at absorbing all that information from the road rather than your body just taking a slight beating, which I really did start to feel in the cheat. So what's interesting as well is the different densities of material that they've got. So on the expensive, it's actually very soft, this foam layer here. But as you get towards the actual foot, it gets very, very hard. But on the cheap, pretty much immediately is a very just hard layer of foam. And then you've got a very soft layer on the inside. So it's actually flipped the other way around. So is the expensive really worth more than three times cheap? Let's talk about it. One thing we can be certain about is there definitely is more engineering and product development that has gone into expensive. You could just see that by the quality and number of materials used just to make the one shoe. I do feel like cheap does an adequate job in this instance, but it just really isn't something that is going to be worth using long term. And I think if you're serious about running or doing it longer than a month or two, you should probably look at going for the more expensive options. When it comes to things like comfort and your physical health, if you can afford it, it's always worth going slightly more expensive. Or maybe not to the top of the market, but this isn't where this shoe sits. Overall, I think we saw a good performance out of both of these shoes. But I do have to say, I think the performance from expensive was better today. Just to reiterate, if this is what you can afford, it's going to be more than adequate and it will fulfill its purpose for sure. But if you can afford something closer to this, I would suggest going for it. So now we have to ask ourselves, which one deserves the coveted Very Cool Award? And I'm leaning towards expensive. I think it's just done a better performance today. And actually, for the price, in terms of what you get, it's kind of worth it. So, very cool. So again, we got some interesting results today. So the plan at the moment is to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'll do these longer videos where we can do a whole number of different things. I've got loads planned. So make sure you subscribe if you like this sort of thing. As always, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and a comment if you did. Subscribe if you want more content like this. And I hope to see you next time. Very cool.